dirty hair, woo! Fancy earrings and dirty hair. I feel like I'm in college again. <laughs> Hello beautiful makers, welcome to Stitching the High Notes, a YouTube channel and online shop for the multi craft This is a video podcast where I talk about knitting, sewing, cross-stitching, music, the arts, and all things crafty. My name is Joanna and I am coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area where I am a local opera singer and arts fundraiser and now officially a shop owner, an online shop owner. You can see what I'm up to on Instagram and Ravelry uh, as Opera Joe, most notably on Instagram most of the time. And you can also see what is gonna be coming into the shop at at Stitching the High Notes with a bunch of underscores that I'm trying to get rid of, but all the links will be down below in the down bar, as well as show notes for everything I chat about today and share with you. There is also a website, stitchingthehighnotes.com, and yeah, hi, how are you? I hope you've all had a wonderful week. Welcome to all returning viewers, and hello to all new viewers. Thanks for checking this we podcast out among the many out there. I hope you enjoy your visit today. I have lots to share with you today. I got a lot of knitting done amazingly <laughs> during this week um, and lots to chat about with you, including some shop news later on down in the podcast, so to speak. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? As is tradition, we start with tea time and today's Tea is La Croix, or La Croix, as some people say. La Croix, La Croix, tomato, tomato. It is Monday, I keep thinking it's Sunday, but it's Monday Labor Day here in America. And uh, it's a little bit hot outside. It's definitely, the weather has turned to fall. It's crisper outside, so it's nice. But I've been sewing my tushy off <laughs> this past weekend. I've been laboring on Labor Day, but blissfully so. And so this has been my fuel. Not promoted, which I always, I'm like, why do people always say I'm not promoted? But if they want to promote me, hit me up, because I drink cases of this stuff. Anyway, but I wanted, you might also spot, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw an Instagram story where I was at Joann's the other day and I was like, do I buy this or do I not buy this? Among, I, I was shocked to get so many messages from you all, thank you, saying, buy, buy it, what are you thinking, buy it? <laughs> and so lo and behold, I had to go back to Joann's, shocker, um, for opening a shop, you have to go there like every other day apparently. But I could not resist anymore. And so I got this at Joanne Fabrics. It's this cute little mug that says Spice Spice Baby. Because you guys, it is pumpkin season. Pumpkin season is here, as well as pumpkin spice latte. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> grab your beverage of choice <laughs> and let's get started. Cheers. So as I prepare my makes in progress, I did want to report back. I did get some Nut Pods um, pumpkin spice flavor. Delicious. Delicious. I have one, maybe two, sometimes three, even though I'm trying to cut it off at two cups of coffee these days. It's pumpkin spice lattes every morning and it, they're, they're great because I can't have the Starbucks ones anymore. They're they have too many additives and sugar and all kinds of stuff, so my body kind of goes, woo, woo, alert, alert. So this is a great alternative. It's with almond milk and coconut milk and spices and great. I love it. On to some nitty goodness, shall we? So <laughs> makes in progress. I finished a bunch of makes. I finished this lovely lady back here who I have worn once, and it's great. I'm tolerating it well. This is my Mix 34 cowl made with Shibui Knits, Silk Cloud, and Staccato. And so there's mohair and um, silk and wool blends all put together. And I was having a little bit of trouble with the mohair, but 
now I'm good. I'm good. It's just very warm. That might have been what I was reacting to more than anything was the warmth. I digress. So now I've picked up my summer dreams pullover. I finished a summer make um, for the summer garment mail, which is now done. And I picked up my original summer make, which is this. And I finished the body, which I was just about to finish doing last time I showed you. So I finished the body. Isn't that beautiful? This is Legacy Fiber Arts in the Avon Calling colorway, inspired by um, Edward Scissorhands. I love it so much. And then I've been saying for a while, like I, I put this on waist yarn, which is what it is, and then I cast on the yoke. I was not reading the directions, which tends to happen sometimes, and just meaning not reading ahead. Um, and really what needed to happen is I needed to cast on the sleeves, which is great. So this is one sleeve, it's a short sleeve uh, top, and then there'll be a little bit of yoke. I'm showing a picture here if I haven't already. And then you, a little bit of the yoke here, and then even more across the shoulders, if that makes any sense. Visually, you're probably getting what I'm talking about. So I finished one sleeve. Those are where my increases were. A nice little garter ridge, kind of cuff if you will. And this is, I knit this on smaller needles and this on the same size needle as the body. So I think it's a size three and a size four here. I'm using my carbons needles. Wait a minute, and I have the second sleeve cast on right now. And it's perfect because I needed something really portable last week and definitely this coming week, which I will talk about a little bit later on in backstage knitting, um, work schedule wise. <clears throat> so I have it in my lovely little Sandy by the lakeside bag, which I love. And I have my Carbons needles interchangeables with the second sleeve. There you go. So I have a few more rows here and then I will be into some stock and net in the round goodness. I'm doing magic loop, um, which I prefer. I've done DPNs and I don't know, maybe I need to give them a go again, but I'm so used to magic loop. So I usually do that. I really want to try out the nine inch circular needles. Um, so I might, look into getting some of those down the road or maybe at Vogue Knitting Live, which is coming up in a few weeks here in San Francisco. I cannot wait. I'm gonna see Tristan and Christy and Kay, the crazy sock lady, and Tristan and Christy of um, uh, the Girls from the Yarn Cafe, Dragon Horde Yarn, uh, Yarn Cafe, Yarns. I don't think I'm saying that wrong. I'm putting it all down here and in the show notes. Cause I'm flowing right now. <laughs> I have had a lot of coffee today. Um, so that is my make in progress. And that is the only one to show you guys this week. I've done a little bit of cross stitching, which I'll grab and show you and I'll be right back. I'm back. So before I fully get into cross stitch corner, I did want to mention that I am going to pull winners for the Summer Garment Mal in the next episode or even a separate episode. I just kind of ran out of time today with getting stuff as much as possible done for the shop and some personal things. So I hope you guys understand, but I want to do it justice and show all of the gorgeous prizes that you wonderful makers sent in um, and donated for the Mal. So stay tuned for that. It won't be much longer, I promise. I'll go. <laughs> so cross stitch corner. So I did a little bit of cross stitch, not too much. So this is my beloved Peace on Earth banner set by Satsuma Street. And I'm gonna show you the pattern. Whoop. And the, this is on perforated paper. And I've done, I finished, I started in 
well, maybe I had started it last episode. I can't remember. But I finished up the on piece. So piece on earth. Very pretty. Get a little bit closer. The light's a little funky because it's the end of the day. It's about four o'clock here. Maybe five, actually. My stomach is rumbling. <laughs> And if you are new or haven't seen in a while, here are the other ones I'll show just really briefly. The other little letters. And I can't wait, I can't, I'm so excited to have one word done now. It's so great, I have scrap thread all over the place. I'm working on making little bowls for me and then I think I'm gonna put them in the shop too that are little thread catchers. So stay tuned for those, but yeah, I have thread like all over the place right now. So <laughs> P for peace. This is the A. Here's all my thread everywhere. See, there you go. The other E and the C. I did that out of order, but you get the drift. Isn't that so pretty? I love Jody's color palette. I could go on and on for days. And now I have on. It's great. So I'm going to probably probably take a little break from this guy and work on the next project, which I will grab for you, which is by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. It need, needs a little ironing, but you guys, I'm excited to show you this is one of my project bags that'll be in the shop. <laughs> I literally just finished making it. <laughs> I found this fabric at SF Bay Quilts here in the Bay Area on Saturday. And there's some that's green and some that's pink. I'll show more next week. I'm gonna show all of the products that'll be in the shop next week. I'm still chugging along but yes this is one of my project bags this is still kind of a quasi prototype which is why I'm keeping it um, but I love this fabric so much I mean it's got cross stitch cross stitches on it isn't that so cool and it's so classic it looks like like a Van Gogh painting Van Gogh painting but yes, I have little vinyl windows so you can see what project you have inside. I also am toying with um, working on a pattern to do a window on the back side as well because I love my little Ziploc bags and I love, I'll just flash it really quick. I love having, being able to see my thread on one side and then turn it over and just read my pattern directly from the other side of the back. So I'll be doing variations of things um, as time goes on, but I'm really, really excited to introduce this project back to you all. It's cushioned, if you will, or lined with um, uh, quilting batting so it's nice and squishy but it has like a good sturdy shape to it um, this is the medium sized bag so in it's longer so it specifically can fit patterns like this guy here and um, kind of your standard frosted pumpkins to tree size patterns which I will get out here they're all zippered and lined inside and then yeah I love it. I'm really, really excited about these. So I'm excited to make a million out of all these different fabrics. I'm like, fabrics have been going crazy right now in a wonderful, creative, inspiring way. So this is the other little stitching project that I worked on this week. I didn't do a ton. I did a little bit of the barn. Whoops my needle make sure my needle doesn't come out here so you can see I kind of filled in the little barn right there and it's looking really good I'm really digging it I'm definitely making peace with the fact that the stitches aren't like super like straight and um, 
not straight. They're not as even as when I was doing punch method with on a frame, on a Q-snap frame. Um, but I think at the end I saw, um, I was chatting with Sue Stokes yesterday of um, Legacy Fiber Arts and she was stretching out her stitching and I think, oh, there was a kid running down the hall. Oh dear, we'll take a little pause for the crying. Okay, I think everything's fine now. <laughs> I think they were running too fast down the hall. Anyway, so um, where was I saying? Oh yeah, so Sue was stretching out one of her finished projects and I think I didn't get a chance to ask her, Sue, if you're watching, text me and let me know, but I think that that was to help even out the stitches because she does sewing method um, as well. So in hand, stitching in hand. So there you go. I haven't talked about this linen in a while, so let me get the little doobly-doo out here. I still have my floss in my plastic bag. I think I wanna add, uh, I'm also gonna work on making some clear vinyl pouches to go with uh, the project bags in the shop. So you can put your floss in there if you choose. You know, everybody's got a different way to organize their embroidery floss, which is so cool. So this linen, back to this little project, is sparkly as you can see. And it is Crystal Bashful Cashel 28 count linen. And it's a 13 by 18 piece. And it came in the kit. This was a kit that I picked up from Stitches West a couple of years ago. So there's the thing, you might wanna see that. So that is Cross Stitch Corner and the first introduction to one of my little bags, which needs to be ironed. <laughs> so there'll be lots of these in the shop um, and I'll talk more about shop later on. So on to the next segment. Since the summer Mal has ended, that means it's time for a new Mal, a new make along. And for the third year in a row, I am excited to mention again, I think I mentioned it in the last episode that Gabby of Once Upon a Corgi and I are gonna be hosting our third annual Pumpkin Mal. And that is to celebrate all things pumpkin because we love pumpkin. So it's gonna start on September 15th and it'll go until November 23rd, which I believe is the day after or the day of American Thanksgiving. And all of the details, all of the rules and everything can be found in the Ravelry group. Um, I've opened up a chatter thread there. And in short, if I can do it correctly from off the top of my head, um, whips are allowed, so works in progress are allowed as long as they're 50% um, or less complete, so 50% or like you just cast on. Um, and then um, you can crochet, weave, spin, knit, anything fiber related, um, and you can this year also sew items. And no cross stitching yet, but I think we might do a cross stitch sal if you are interested. There are a couple of folks who mentioned something in the chatter thread already. so. Let me know if, in the comments down below if you're interested in doing a stitch along that's pumpkin themed. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. We're fall themed. We can shake it up if we want. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, so to enter for prizes, should you be interested, there'll be a finished object thread in my group as well as in Gabby's group. And there's a chatter thread in Gabby's group as well. Links are down below in the down bar. And um, you just need to be a member of both of our groups in order to be eligible for prizes. And if you are a maker and want to donate a prize for the make along, please contact me or Gabby. You can contact me at opera joe at stitching the high notes.com or a direct message on Ravelry. I prefer not on Instagram just because it's a little bit harder for me to track on there. So it'd be great if you could email or direct message me on Ravelry. That'd be awesome. And then head over to Gabby's group or watch her latest podcast because I'm sure she has details uh, about how to contact her. I still have to watch her latest podcast, Gabby. <laughs> I'm a little blind. 
So we did, um, Gabby and I both received a prize already from Lauren of Color Wheel Yarns. Hi Lauren. And, oh my gosh, I can't even. And it is a skein of pumpkin-y goodness and it's called Don't Call Me Pumpkin. I cannot even. Oh my goodness. It's not only just pumpkin-y, it's a bit Halloween-y with the purple and the green. Tis the season. Oh, it's gorgeous. So this is a 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% gold stellina base. And it is 438 yards, 100 grams. Oh, it's, so, it's really soft too. And here's Lauren's card where you can find her. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So thank you so much, Lauren. And she generously provided me a skin for me. So I might be making mom some socks because I make socks for my mom most commonly, but I might make a cowl out of this for me. Sorry, mom. <laughs> I feel like I say that every time I hold a skinny yarn, I go, eh, it could make sense for mom, but I might make it for me. <laughs> So thank you so much, Lauren, and um, thank you everybody who's excited to participate. I've heard from so many of you, and it's turned into a really, really fun tradition. I did just grab this card, and I did want to mention, too, that Lauren has generously offered a coupon code for all of you until November 22nd, and that's um, for 10% off anything under her shop, and that's with the code PUMPKIN, which I will put right here. So thank you again, Lauren, and thanks everybody. I can't wait to see what you all are planning to make or have already started to make. I wanted to chat a little bit about some dream making, which has come and gone, but never been really fully cast on. I found this the other day as I was going through my drawers for knitting notions and stuff, because I needed stitch holders. This is my, <laughs> my one and only cozy memory blanket square. My one and only. I did it and was like, ah, it's okay. And then time happened, interests changed course. And I, but I kept this cause I was like, you never know one day I might need to add on another square. And I've had it in a drawer or box back here or something and I found it. It is calling to me. It is calling, it is siren song of cozy blanket <laughs> because I, just the feel of this and the garter and the squishiness, I want a giant blanket of yarny, gartery goodness over my body right now. <laughs> so I think that I am going to jump into the deep end here and start working and picking it up as I go on a cozy memory blanket. Because I think part of it too is I've been craving something, some TV knitting during the week where or even just on the weekend when I am really brain fried and I just need something really easy and simple but satisfying and I'm doing socks or I'll do a project where I'm in the round and it's great. But after finishing those two finished makes last week, I'm, I, I'm high off of the finished make <laughs> and I want to keep finishing things. So, and I think this might, I think this might be the answer. Let me know what you think. I know so many of us have, so many of us makers have a cozy memory blanket or a granny stripe blanket or something. But I would love to hear if you get that finished make satisfaction <laughs> from your cozy memory blanket. So just wanted to chat about that with you because I was kind of taken aback by the fact that I 
was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this right now. And I'm already, I have minis, like freaking dust bunnies all over the place. Beautiful, beautiful dust bunnies. But <laughs> yes, so I'm gonna watch some tutorials. I know Ellie of Craft House Magic has one that I need to check out and there are a bunch of others. So, and um, because part of, part of it is that I, I wanna figure out how to easily pick up stitches, that's partly, I'm remembering now as I chat about it, I'm remembering part of my roadblock with doing this is the fact that you have to pick up stitches and I did this maybe two or th two and a half, two years ago, and again, I did it at a Stitches West with my friend Margaret. <laughs> and back then the idea of picking up stitches for every little square was like, oh, please God, no, but now that I, I'm a seasoned knitter. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I could totally do that. So I want to find out like a really great technique to do that. And then also how to shift doing the diagonals so that I can kind of get an, I want to do diagonals almost like, a, like a flag, like a union jack or whatever going like this. So That's that's all I had for dream making. I just wanted to share my inner thoughts about that with you. <laughs> so I have a little bit of shop news. Um, I will save that to the end because I know not everybody's super interested, but I do really want to share it with you. I'm excited. Um, backstage knitting wise, I don't have a lot. Um, this week coming up is the opening of the seasons for the San Francisco Symphony and the San Francisco Opera, both places I work in different roles. And uh, so that's a little bit why, in addition to getting things ready for the shop to open, I'm a little, oh. <laughs> but I, yeah, so this week is going to be very busy and it's a condensed week because of the holidays. So yes. I'm trying to get all of the things done. So more about backstage knitting next um, episode because I'll have pictures from the opening and I did haven't gotten my gown dry cleaned yet, but I took it out today and smelled it and it might be okay. I might just spray a little perfume on it. I've only worn it a few times, so I think it might be okay, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm totally gonna keep this in but anyway you all know how it is so shop news which feels really surreal to have a segment if you will in my podcast for shop news after all of these years of two years of <laughs> podcasting so I'm opening very soon tentative date right now is September 15th which is a Saturday and I am busily making bags and a couple of other items. Um, I have a few things that I wanted to show you just to tease and show you kind of what I've been doing, um, but I will show you everything next episode with all of the different fabrics and variations, which I'm really excited about. Um, but there is one thing that's in the shop now, and that is, haven't seen already on Instagram. I have a logo pin. Yes, I finally, probably right before the fad dies out, <laughs> I have got a logo pin. Very, very, very exciting. So this is a beautiful little enamel logo pin for your collection. I know I have quite the collection now and I'm still collecting and there's, there's something about these pins that brings such joy to our making on our knitting bags and jean jackets and yeah, I don't think the fad will, will die out anytime soon. It might slow down a little bit, but I'm very, very excited to have these little beauties and they are in the shop right now. So if you wanna grab one, get them while they're hot, 
I might have to do another order very soon. We shall see. But yes, I'm just, it's so surreal to see this in a tangible form after so many years of just having a JPEG or, <laughs> and it started with a sketch in my book and then my friend said, my friend Seth saying, oh, I'll go whip it up for you. It's, it's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of amazing. <sighs> so those are in the shop right now. And then this is just one. There are many other fabric variations, a lot of Halloween and fall and pumpkin that I'll show next week. But these were the first ones that I made. A little sock bag. They are drawstring. And they're nice and sturdy and squishy. They have the quilting fabric inside too and this lovely like denim cotton base see there's thread everywhere <laughs> lovely cotton base box bottom and a twill drawstring and a really simple lining for this particular design inside and they're just I love them they're just the drawstring bags, I have some from um, some of my maker friends who also have shops, and I just think these are the classic thing to have your sock projects in. I think they're throw in your bag, but also it's set up in a way that you can roll over the top and create these lovely squishy little bowls. And yeah, I'm just, I'm thrilled with how these turned out. I worked really hard on finding the pattern that I really liked with all the different little variations that you can do. Um, and I really wanted to find a bottom that really was very, very sturdy, but still very soft to the touch. And I, yeah, I love them. I have um, fabric that I have this in black as well this type of fabric here on the bottom which will have a drawstring channel on the top coordinating in the same color and same fabric and then a variety of different fabrics here some Harry Potter fabrics and all kinds of stuff um, and I have some gray that's a slightly different um, kind of weave but a very similar fabric, more of a linen base, but it's gray with some real art deco-y looking fabric because my aesthetic is super art deco. You can see how much I love Satsuma Street and things like that. And yeah, and yeah, and then the cross stitch bags, which you've seen. So those are the project bags that'll be in the shop. They'll be medium and large project bags, which I'll talk about way more next episode. And right now I'll have these sock size bags. Um, I wanna branch out and do larger bags, but this is, this is what I can muster right now, which I'm really excited as I get up and running and lots of other little ideas too. So I'll have some notions in the shop as well, which I'll show next week, which are stitch markers um, and progress keepers. I found some lovely pewter uh, progress keepers or charms rather that I've made into progress keepers. And I have a lot of ideas for future things. I'm working on designs for cross stitch. Uh, and I want to make some notion bags from the scrap fabric that I have and yeah it's 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 been a journey to get this up and running but also kind of balance out the flow of ideas that I have I don't know you fellow shop owners and makers if you've struggled with this in a good way struggle where you just have so many ideas that you want to 
make and get out there, but you really have to pick and choose what you can do first and then roll out over time. Um, so that's been a big learning lesson for me, <clears throat> as well as balancing it with life, you know, balancing it with personal life and with work. Um, but it's working out and I'm really, really, really happy and I'm really, really excited to share this all with you. And I thank you all for your interest and your support. And yeah. so September 15th, here we go. And next episode, I'll show you, do the whole parade of things that'll be in the shop going forward. It's crazy. It's amazing. Whoa. Yay. So that's it for this week. I said it would be short and sweet. I really wanted to visit with you all and share these items for the shop and how I've been working on my, how I've been doing rather on my makes. I really want to get full steamed with my summer dreams pullover, but I have a feeling this week things will be slowing down quite a bit until Sunday when I can really go full throttle making wise. I probably will finish my other sleeve, but otherwise it's opera season y'all. It is here. It is here. <laughs> So I will leave it here. I hope you are all doing well. I hope you are doing well with your projects and your makes. And I will see you all very soon next week. Bye. Mwah.